impairment of uh, defense mechanism factors that damage defense mechanism includes viral infections toxic gases and uh, certain other conditions so first of all viral infections viral agents predispose human and animal to secondary bacterial pneumonias by viral bacterial synergism in human a good example is that of the influenza virus in which the mortality rate is significantly increased due to secondary bacterial pneumonia in animals the most common viruses that predispose to secondary bacterial pneumonia including influenza virus in pig and horses bovine herpes virus first para influenza virus 3 and bovine respiratory syncytial virus brsv in cattle and canine distemper virus in dog the mechanism of synergistic effect of uh, viral bacterial infection is the destruction of mucillary blanket and a simultaneous reduction of mucillary clearance 5 to 7 days after a bacterial infection the phagocytic function of alveolar macrophages is greatly impaired means damaged however the mechanism by which viruses damage the defense mechanism are many and remain poorly understood second is the toxic gases certain gases also damage respiratory defense mechanism and make animals more susceptible to secondary bacterial infection for example hydrogen sulfide and ammonia can damage pulmonary defense mechanism and increase susceptibility to bacterial pneumonia now comes to the pathology of uh, nasal cavity and sinuses so now we are studied about uh, re- respiratory system uh, defense mechanism and uh, how that defense mechanism get impaired so after that impairment the pathology related to nasal cavity and sinuses is going to is uh, discussed now the anomalies of uh, nasal cavity and sinuses congenital anomalies of the nasal cavity are rare in domestic animal anomalies such as uh, coanal atresia yani ki uh, imperforate bucco pharyngeal membrane some types of uh, chondrodysplasia and uh, osteopetrosis are uh, compatible with life incompatible with life that is uh, they are fatal non fatal congenital anomalies include uh, cystic nasal conchi nasal and sinus cyst deviation of nasal septum cleft upper lip yani ki hair lip iske alawa isko hum kehte hain klistcho ischisis uh, chilo ischisis chilo ischisis and uh, hypoplastic turbinates and uh, cleft palate yani ki palato ischisis next hai metabolic disturbances metabolic disturbances these are also rare in the domestic animal isme hai amyloidosis which is associated with the deposition of amyloid protein that means fibrils with beta plated configuration in various tissue has been reported in nasal cavity of horses affected horses have difficulty in breathing epistaxis and show large firm nodules in the nasal septum and floor of nasal cavity microscopic lesions consist of deposition of hyaline material that is congruent positive in uh, nasal mucosa unlike amyloidosis in other organs of domestic animal where amyloid is of reactive type that is amyloid aa in equine nasal amyloidosis it is of the immunocystic type that is the amyloid al immunocytic type that is amyloid al then comes to circulatory disturbances the nasal mucosa is highly vascularized active hyperemia is associated with early stage of inflammation where caused by viral infection secondary bacterial infection allergy trauma or irritants such as ammonia passive hyperemia that is a congestion is a non specific lesion hemorrhages from the nose that is epistaxis or nose bleed may results from local trauma erosions of submucosal vessel by inflammation such as in an uh, acute septicemic diseases or neoplasm 
an important cause of epistaxis in horses is uh, mycotic infe- infection of guttural pouches ethmoidal hematoma are important in older horses they are characterized by chronic progressive often unilateral bleeding and uh, the next is the inflammation inflammation of nasal mucosa is called rhinitis and uh, that of uh, sinuses called as sinusitis they usually occur together now first uh, comes to study about uh, rhinitis so uh, these are the all about uh, the different type of pathology of nasal cavity and sinuses isme uh, we are now studying about rhinitis so it will be studied in the next lecture thanks